I see some intimidating voices out here, but uh, if you hear somebody who sounds like he or she's in the Metropolitan, don't let that intimidate you one little bit. That should simply be encouragement. All right, are we ready? Maestro, three, four. Riverside Church is an organization of national and quite often worldwide religious, social, and political significance. On Sunday, however, the key function of the church is the worship service from 11 a.m. till noon. At that time, this beautiful 50-year-old sanctuary is filled with preaching, prayer, and songs of praise. But Sunday is a complex day at Riverside. There are dozens of behind the scenes groups, people, and events, which in some way add to or support the worship service. Many of these facets are seldom if ever recognized by the public or, in many ways, are taken for granted. The communications division of the church would now like to publicly acknowledge their varied contributions by presenting to you Sunday behind the scenes at Riverside. Visitors or new members to Riverside may not be aware that on 120th Street, beneath the South Hall, is a parking facility which can accommodate 160 cars. For a small fee, you can park all day in a place where your car is safe. The engineering staff runs the parking lot. Their responsibilities within the church are much deeper, however. Riverside has more than seven million cubic feet of space to heat in the winter or cool in the summer. Each year, it uses more than two million kilowatts of electrical power and consumes more than 100,000 gallons of fuel. The heating and cooling is kept under constant watch in order to secure comfortable temperatures throughout the building complex. Another engineering responsibility is the lighting of the church. Particular attention is paid to lighting the nave where the worship service is centered. Lighting the nave can be measured by wattage or, as the service looms closer, by candlelight. Behind the altar is a permanent baptismal pool. Engineers keep the pool spotless throughout the week in order to uphold the sanctity of full immersion baptism. Before the service, an engineer takes a temperature reading to ensure comfort for each initiate. Located near the altar is the organ. John Walker arrives at the church on Sunday, hours before the service, in order to practice. John Walker is also an instructor of the organ at Columbia Teachers College and a member of the theory faculty at Manhattan School of Music. Music to nourish the spirit, food to revitalize the body. There are over 40 kitchens at Riverside Church. The South Hall kitchen has a fully staffed and equipped facility and is the largest kitchen in the church.
On average, this kitchen prepares meals for 500 people for Sunday's noon buffet, now two and one half hours away. Breakfast is on a short order basis. Thank you very much. All right. The first Sunday of the month, Riverside celebrates the Lord's Supper. In order for this to take place, many hours of volunteer time is necessary. Usually, 45 trays of juice are needed to serve the congregation. Over 1,500 goblets are filled. Six pounds of bread are cut into small bits and placed on trays. Approximately an hour before the service begins, the choir undergoes a half-hour tune-up. All of the hymns and choral pieces to be performed during the service are rehearsed. The Riverside Chorus is world-renowned for its choral ability and has recorded a wide variety of church music. The nave can hold more than 2,000 Sunday worshipers. The communications division of the church has extended the church ministry to a potential audience of 200,000 subscribers of Manhattan and Group W cable television networks. An hour before the service, volunteers from the video project ready TV equipment and themselves in order to produce a 28-minute capsule of the service. It is televised each Sunday evening at 8 p.m. Members and visitors generally begin arriving between 10.15 and 10.30. Ushers are eager to provide a handshake, a friendly smile, and a word of welcome. By 10.30, just a half hour before the service begins, the chancel has been rearranged for the Lord's Supper. We know it's 10.30 now because at that time each Sunday, the giant bells in the tower begin to peal, telling the neighborhood that Riverside is nearly ready to begin its hour of worship. Once the big bells end their drama, the smaller bells begin. There are over 74 bells in the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Memorial Carolyn. James Lawson is Riverside's Carolinaire. He has played the intricate device at Riverside since 1960. The requirements for a good carolinium are one, a strong back, two, strong arms, three, 
no gout, and four, a weak mind. Uh, I don't know how many of you folks know this, but uh, the reason why clergy wear these robes is that uh, all clerical robes had their origin in clothes that were worn in the marketplace in Jesus' time. You can see they're a little fancier than they were in Jesus' time. And the stole was originally a sweat rag that uh, you wore around your neck in very hot climates, very much the way a swimmer would throw a towel around his neck. Now, of course, uh, it serves many purposes. The uh, robes also uh, cover the shaking knees and a few things like that. <laughs> Now, just minutes before the service begins, the choir is also concerned about proper robing style. The ministerial dressing room is also a refuge where the persons about to conduct the service can have a quiet moment of reflection and inspiration. All right, should we have a word of prayer? Okay. Lord, we thank thee to get another day has been added to our lives. Ask now thy grace. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Promptly at 11 a.m., the organist begins the processional hymn. All is ready for the celebration of worship to begin. This is not the time for many staff people and volunteers to rest and meditate. For some, the work has just begun. While parents are attending the service, lay teachers supervise an array of activities for future church members. On the roof of the south wing is a play space for nursery and kindergarten youngsters. There are other activities for this age group. The body movement program teaches children the value of relaxation so they can discover space in relation to different parts of the body. Time is allowed for an adult to read Bible stories to the children. While Jonah was sleeping, the Lord sent a great storm. The ship tossed up and down, and everyone was afraid. And the captain came to Jonah and shook him and said, Wake up, lazy bones. There's a huge storm. Can you do anything about it? Right, we're just gonna do it on the outside. There is also an art period where children can express their own interpretation of different Bible stories through painting and collage. And I'll come around and tape down your flower, okay? The children are exposed to a short period of chat. This session usually rings with the singing of church-related songs. Good morning, boys and girls. Such a beautiful day today out there that I thought today in chapel we would just sing. So as I light the candles, let's sing, sing a song of church bells. And can you make the church bells really ring? By now, the service is in high gear, and most of the pews are filled. But how many people are in the church?
It is the duty of the usher staff to make an official count of the Sunday attendance for a required report the next day. Indeed, communication between the ushers is important, particularly if there's an illness during the service. In that case, a sick person can be brought to a private emergency room located close to the narthex of the church. In the meantime, there are ongoing classes for middle school children. Similar to the nursery through kindergarten grades, the students study spiritually oriented music. They also receive instruction in Bible study and interpretation, as well as instruction in painting and handicrafts, where they can express themselves artistically. a wonderful thing happens. A perfectly wonderful thing that has happened since a billion times over. No sooner does Peter tell Jesus who he is than Jesus tells Peter who he is. Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood Perhaps has the most important part of the service is the sermon. There are truths that the mind can defend, but not This discover. is certainly the attitude of the and communications you, you department, Peter, which supervises the video production myself. used later on that evening for Manhattan now, and Group W cable this television. Morning, let's not get embroiled in the controversy swirling around that passage. For our Here, purposes this morning, the director pays close attention simply, to sound and color balance of the picture to ensure a quality product a for the TV audience. Yours, I can build a church. And because you were the first to grab... The Riverside Church in the city of New York now invites you to its service of worship. Recorded last week in the day for broadcast at this time, William Stone Coffin, Jr., Senior Minister. <laughs> Adjacent to the video studio is a fully resourced radio center. Like the video project, its chief responsibility is recording the service. Later during the week, it is edited and broadcast to a potential audience of 22 million listeners. The FM signal reaches a 50-mile radius. Generally, the sermons of William Sloan Coffin or any Riverside preacher communication process is are targeted going on. to an adult audience. Now, we started out talking about it being boring and about not being interested in what was being said in the group. I'll come back to what Renee started out with in the beginning. But what, what about the Riverside teenagers not quite know? ready to hear what a sermon? Is that what you're doing? No. no. Never. 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 An encounter Never. session. No. Some people want to it's a forum where now right and wrong, conduct and then misconduct can be discussed and deliberated among right. peers. The teenage years are an awakening of mind, spirit, and body. Classes in ballet and modern dance are available downstairs in the gym. Way to do it. Who are the most ethnocentric people in the world? We are. We who? 
In respect to Riverside being a church of international reputation, high schoolers receive instruction on their role from a global perspective. It's a class forum where cultures, races, and religions are dissected and examined. Now, you'll be civilized when we put up a high-rise and a duplex, and God, you've got to have church. Got to have God. Oh, you mean like that? That's not church. Do you profess your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord? Yes. Upon that profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, the Mother of us all. In the same way, after he supped, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever ye drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Will you continue in worship now as we present our morning offering? Just past noon, an hour of prayerful celebration nears a conclusion. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. But from the north axe, the there is another perspective. And forevermore. Amen. right after the service ends. Between 200 and 300 people are generally served. Earlier in the morning, the kitchen prepared food for the expected noontime rush for luncheon. In a year's time, it's common for this cafeteria to serve 25 tons of chicken and 30 tons of roast beef for daily meals, as well as for the frequent banquets for dignitaries such as Jesse Jackson, Andrew Young, and other world figures. Riverside began in 1841 down in Lower Manhattan as the Norfolk Street Baptist Church. Norfolk Street is down the In Christ's Manhattan Chapel, and a brief history of the church is given to guests years, and visitors. And A general tour and lecture about the nave usually follows. Let's look at the windows for a minute, too, while we're sitting here. Uh, again, you have a different style of windows around the church. Around the total the top, lecture and tour windows, usually takes 45 minutes. Again Besides this short Sunday and tour, a three-day or three-hour tour can also be arranged. Scenes. Remember, this was Communion Sunday. 
1,500 goblets and 45 trays have to be cleaned and readied for use the next time. Six to eight members of the stewards committee usually perform this task and are kept busy till mid-afternoon. Riverside stocks its library with over 2,000 books. The books cover a wide range of social and religious issues, life, death, war, peace, and abortion. Because Riverside has played such an important role in this armament, you can always find material on the bomb. Riverside Church has an internationally famous basketball squad. Under the direction of Ernie Lorch, they've traveled to Canada, Britain, and as far away as Russia to play high school opponents. Some of Ernie's ball players have reached the pro league. Yes, professionalism. That's a tall concept for a teenage ball player. But Riverside is an environment in which role models of high education, motivation, and the highest professional reputation are not difficult to find. Located in our nation's largest city, a city which is at times referred to as the capital of the world, Riverside Church attracts not only many outstanding New Yorkers, it helps create outstanding citizens of all ages ready for today's world. A behind the scenes look at just one day at Riverside does not do it justice. It has so many projects which benefit our society and beyond. Programs to feed the hungry, counsel the emotionally distraught, and reverse the arms race. By ever widening its channels of communication, the work of Riverside Church will be kept alive, not only in New York, but thriving in a world of